Hi, most of you are familiar with this board over here known as the Arduino Uno and have probably done a lot of sketch programming on this device. Now the main component on this board is actually this chip over here known as the Atmega 328P microcontroller. What I'm going to show you is how to program this controller in bare metal, that means at the register level. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the GPIO configuration and how to program some input and output using this bare metal technique. Let's get started. So right now, what I've done is I've connected up my, my Arduino Uno uh, to an LED over here. So the connection is from pin 13 over here, pin 13 is a red color wire to the uh, anode of the LED and the cathode of the LED goes uh, through a current limiting resistor and back to ground. All right. Now what I'm going to do is first we're going to I'm going to show you a quick uh, recap of how you would have probably done this in sketch programming. So in sketch programming, uh, in order to uh, since we are driving this LED, okay, the pin has been configured as the output, so we would have said pin mode, okay, pin thirteen as output. All right, and then in terms of uh, setting it to one or zero, we use the digital write function. Digital write 13 uh, high, so that is to drive it high or logic one, and then we can have a delay over here, the 500 millisecond, and then we do one more time here. Digital write low, and then another delay over here. Okay, so what this code is simply going to do is it's going to first configure the pin as an output, pin that is an output, and then we're going to uh, toggle between high and low with a small amount of delay. Okay, so let's just run this code and just uh, ensure that our understanding of sketch programming uh, is still correct. Okay, so now it's compiling the code, it's downloading, and now you see the LED blinking. All right, so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to transition from sketch to the actual bare metal programming. Now, in order to transition from the sketch to the bare metal, we must first understand where or how this pin 13 from the sketch library translates to the uh, port and pin at the Atmega328 uh, controller level. All right, so in order for us to do that, let's have a look at one of the slides okay, from the handout, which shows you this mapping. And this mapping here, as you can see, is also uh, directly uh, sort of uh, visible from the schematic. So if you zoom in on your schematic, okay, you'll be able to see this mapping. So right now, as you can see, I'm interested in pin 13, which is this pin over here. And this pin 13 is uh, wired up, okay, if, this, if I trace this wire over here, it's connected to this pin here, and if you look at it, this is PB5. So that is port B, Okay, port B, pin 5. So now, we know that this pin 13 on the Arduino uh, board layout or pinout is actually mapped to port B, pin 5 at the microcontroller level. So I need to uh, make sure that I now go to uh, port B and do two things. First, I need to configure the DDR B register. So the DDR is the data direction register. And for each of these ports, there is a associated register. So since we are talking about port B, we need to configure the register for port B. So I need to set it as output. And from the microcontroller data sheet, we know that setting a particular bit to one makes it a output. Okay, setting a, a clearing a bit to zero makes it an input. So again, this is specific to microcontrollers. So in this particular microcontroller, a one to the DR register a bit register uh, actually sets that particular bit to an output. After you configure the DDR register, then I can write to the port by directly uh, writing to the port B register. So this is where you can directly write your data to. Okay, and that will be reflected in the pin. All right, so let's go ahead and do this first. So uh, since I'm going to configure pin five, so uh, each of these ports is uh, an 8 bit port, okay, but in, uh, uh, in not all the uh, bits might be available, alright, so depending on uh, how they have been multiplexed and how they have been mapped out to external bits, alright. So, 
uh, though they may be 8 bits at the register level, not all the bits may be available for us to use. So for port B, we're interested in pin 5. So if you look at the 8 bits of the 8 bit, uh, so 8 bits of the DDR register or port B register. Okay, so let me number them here first. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So what I'm interested in doing is setting this particular bit to A1. Alright. Now, currently I'm not interested in any other bit, so I may just choose to put everything to 0. Alright, so this is the data that I want to put into the DDRB register to make it a output pin. And subsequently, I can write a 1 or a 0 to the same bit location over here to either on the LED or off the LED. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, so now we have an understanding of how to configure it at the bare metal level. So let's go ahead and program it. Okay, so let me uh, bring up my code over here as well as the screen. So I'm going to change this code right now and put it into, uh, I'm going to create a new code uh, sketch here. I'm going to file new. Okay, so in order for me to do uh, sketch programming, uh, sorry, a bare metal programming, what I need to do is I need to include uh, this header file called arduino.h. So when I include this header file, I'll be able to now access all the low-level registers needed for the programming. Okay, so the first step, as we saw, is DDRB. So I can write this value in different ways. So one of the ways I'm going to show you right now is in binary way. So I can put B 00100000. So that uh, is basically the same bit pattern that we saw here. So this configures it as, as an output and subsequently over here what I can do is I can say port B I'm going to put the same value B 0010000 alright and I'm going to put a delay okay and then the, the next line I'm just going to copy paste this Okay, so basically it's the same uh, behavior that you're going to observe because in this first line I'm going to on the LED. Okay, because I write a one to it, and here I'm going to off the LED. Okay, so if I compile this code and I download this at the same time, so I'm going to save it first. Okay, so I have downloaded the code and you can see that right now it is blinking all right with this new code okay maybe we can just change the delay a bit just to confirm okay uh, there is no confusion whether it's this code or the earlier code so let me upload this one more time right now with a much faster blinking rate all right so as you can see if I compare this code with what I did earlier over here, right? You can see the relationship. Writing to DDR B register is equivalent to pin mode. A digital write to pin 13 is the same as writing to port B pin 5. Okay. Now, uh, of course, the code that you see here is uh, very uh, crude in a sense that you are directly writing bits to registers without are considering whether the other bits may hold important information and at the same time you're also hard coding values all right so uh, we need to resolve uh, these two current drawbacks with the code so the first thing we can do is we can hex define all right uh, some constants for the different bits so i'm going to do that first here i will say hex define pin 5 1 shift left 5 so this is basically going to uh, or is defining for me a constant pin 5 
where bit one is shifted to the left by five bit position. So effectively, it is the same thing as what we have over here. Okay, the same thing as what we have over here. All right. Now the next thing is uh, instead of directly using this uh, hard coded value, I can now just put pin phi here. All right, because pin phi is basically one shifted to the left by five bit positions, which translates to the binary bit pattern that we saw earlier. Okay, and now I can also do the same thing over here. Pin phi. All right, and now in this case, since I am uh, not going to write any value to it, I can say zero. Okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm just doing one part of it first. I'm defining a constant over here to make sure that I replace the hard coded value, and then subsequently I'm using that in my code. Okay, so let me uh, let me change this delay a bit to 250. To be able to see the effect and there is a slight change in the delay okay so you can see the same led blinking with a slightly different delay rate but the code has also changed quite a bit with the use of a constant all right now the next thing is uh in your lecture slides all right you have been uh, shown how to use uh, bit masking techniques to ensure that only certain bits are uh, either set or clear. All right. So over here, I'm going to show you just a bit of it. So in this case, for example, BDRB, I want to make sure that uh, I set pin five, but I do not affect the other bits. So in this case, I can do a or operation. Okay, so DDRB or equals to pin or equals to pin 5 means only bit 5 will be set and the rest will be uh, untouched because all with a 1 will set to 1 or with a 0 will not change anything. Alright, so of course I've given more details in the lecture slides. Similarly over here I can do a or so I only uh, in this case set pin 5. Okay, so again uh, to configure the port pins, you may use all, you may directly assign depending on what you want to achieve. Alright, so in this case, I'm just going to use the all function. Okay, and uh, here again, I can choose to directly set to zero or I can do a and okay, with the complement of pin 5. Okay, so what does this do? This makes, uh, makes me invert the bits of pin 5, alright, and then do an AND operation. Okay, so let me run this code first, alright, and show you what is going to happen. Okay, so let me change this to a slightly different value again okay. so the code has been uploaded and now you see that the blinking is a bit faster all right so let me uh, analyze this code a bit more in detail for you Okay, so we are going to now look at this code a bit more in detail to understand exactly how this bit masking is working. So for this first uh, operation here, DDRB or equals to pin 5. So, so let's look at the definition of pin 5. So we say that pin 5 is actually equals to 1 shift left by 5. That means 1 is basically, to imagine that if 1 is represented by binary, it is 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1. and I shift left by 5 means 1 2 3 4 5 so it'll come here so after I shift left by 5 the result is 
zero zero one zero 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 zero. Okay, we did the same thing we wanted to achieve in the beginning. Okay, the same thing we wanted to achieve. Now, the next thing is this. When I do a or equals to pin five for port B, that part is clear because when I do a or, that means in port B register. Okay, I have eight bits. And I am only interested in making sure that pin 5, so this is 7, 6, 5. I am only interested that pin 5 or bit 5 is set to a 1. So all with the 1 will set it to a 1. The rest will be untouched because the rest are all zeros. Correct? The rest of the bits are zeros. So all with a 0 does not change anything. When I want to clear it, I end with the complement of pin 5. So what is the complement of pin 5? So this is pin 5. Okay, so the complement of pin 5 means I invert all the bits. So I get 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So what happens is in the complement, only bit 5 is 0. Okay, so this is bit 5 and the bit 5 is 0. So when I do an AND with a 0, when I do an AND operation with a 0, that bit becomes clear. Alright, so when I take port bn equals to complement of pin 5, I'm clearing bit 5 and an N operation with a 1 retains the original value, it does not change the original value. Alright, so that is how you are able to do bit masking techniques uh, or how you should use bit masking techniques to configure just the required bits in a register. Alright, so I hope that uh, this video has given you a good uh, explanation and, and gives you a good head start for the uh, studio session. Thank you. Bye.